So you're coming along on the journey to see if we can get this warm air heating system from 1965 back up and running as it should be. There you go, you can see all the holes and whatnot in there. The water's just dripped down. So in this video, we have something that I have never ever done before. So it's gonna be a really interesting video because I'm gonna take you along for the journey and show you exactly what's going on. With the heating system inside this bungalow here, it's for a customer of mine that I've had for a good few years. He is absolutely amazing. I'm gonna introduce you to him. But he had this house built and he messaged me the other day and said, Mark, the heating's gone down on it. Now what he's got in here is warm air duct heating. And the system that he's got, I came and took a look at it the other night and it's got a date stamp on it from the 10th of the 10th, 1965. Now it's still running, it's still working absolutely fine. However, He's got a heat exchanger at the bottom of it that blows air through it. I'll show you in a minute. And that's what the problem is. So we're going to have to take a look at it, strip it down, see if we can take it out and get it recorded. I've never done it before. So you're coming along on the journey to see if we can get this warm air heating system from 1965 back up and running as it should be. Right, let me take you in and introduce you to probably one of my number one customers, absolute legend of a man, David, David the well, farmer. Good to see you. So, you we have, not a problem, we've got a problem with your warm air ducting. So where does it come out? Is That's one of them. There's one there and there's one here. So you've got one there, so it just sits, sits in. inducting all round. And that was put in when the house was built, wasn't it? Yeah, it's under floor, it goes all the way in the channel and goes straight through the middle of the house under the wall. So is it just on these centre walls? Yeah, and oh, then, okay. it, then it spreads. There's one down in the bedroom. Carry on up here. It goes out down to that one. Oh, I see. And it just shoots it down into the floor from the unit. It's a hole under there. Along to there. And it does it in my bedroom as well. And it's always been dead warm. It's always been And we found out when we stripped it out the other day, well, I took the top off it the other day, there was a date stamp on it. 10th of the 10th, 1965. Was that when the house was... Yeah. Is that when the house was built? Yeah. So it's been in since. Yeah. Since the house was built. Yeah. So I'll take you through and show you exactly what we've got. So this is the back of it. That's where it takes the air in. That, oh, okay. So it, it pulls the, the air in, in there. there. So this is the unit. I'll take you in a minute and show you the casing for the unit, but I popped out the other night quickly and, and David and I stripped the top of it out and then, to fair play, David took the rest of it out. So this is the heat exchanger. That's a flow and return that comes from the boiler that is down the far end of the house. So you've got your flow and returns coming up here in 28 mil. You've basically got a, a box that goes around it with a fan on the top. The fan obviously sucks cool air in through here or air in through there through the fan and shoots it down through this. It's like a radiator. You've got a Morgan, David, haven't you? <laughs> so what I just said to David was, we can take the radiator out of the Morgan <laughs> and pop it in there, because it looks literally the same. Nearly the same. It's yeah. nearly the same, mate, isn't it? So what we're going to try and do is, I say, I've never worked on one of these before. Um, it's, well, 60 years of having it. You've, <laughs> you've had a little hand in it now and again, haven't you? Well, I clean it out every now and again. That's right, you just blow it out with an yeah, airline, don't I you? Do, yeah. Um, it's got a couple of obviously old gate valves there. So what I'm going to, what I think we're going to try and do is drain the heating system down, see if we can get this out, and you know somewhere that will probably yeah. be able to recore it, don't yeah. you? We have combines and lorry things. Yeah, obviously being lorry a lorry radiator. You boys are always practical, you farmers. <laughs> if you pop, find anything, they'll fix it. So we're going to take this out. And looking at it, what I'm going to do is drain the system, probably take it out this side of these gate valves and then put new gate valves in and then re-pipe across when we've got the new unit back. So my other alternative was if it wasn't leaking too bad and we couldn't get to this was to put some leak sealant in it but obviously you know the, the best thing to do is get it out. So what we're going to do first of all is get it drained down and, uh, and go from there but let me show you what's feeding it. Take us to the boiler, David. So who did you, who done the plumbing on it? You probably done the plumbing first of all, didn't you? I did some of it, Did yes. you? Yes. So this, is, ah, okay, so this is the, yeah, this is the good bit. 
So that's the warm air fan that sits on the top, and that's the motor that runs. Drives it. it yeah, just basically spins that. Out. When we took it off last night, it is Anglo Nordic Model G9, but if you can see that, I don't know if the camera can zoom in. Serial number and then the date, 10th of the 10th, 1965. Now, we, st we took this off the other night, searched the company on Google, got a number for it, the company's still running, Anglo Nordic still running. David rung them up and went, hello mate, we've got a G9 unit, any chance you can send us some parts? But I think it might have been discontinued about 40, 40 years ago, years. I think he yeah. said, didn't he? Yeah. But in principle, it's just a fan, a motor, and the heat exchange, which obviously blows the heat down through the ducting. Now, you had this fitted a few years back, Three didn't you? Paul, Paul put this in. Yeah, Paul put it in. So we've got a Green Star, oil fired. Yeah. Oil fired stand, uh, floor standing boiler. So it's a fairly straightforward new system. What we can do is drain it from here, take the pressure off, drain it from here, and then obviously they're the primaries that drop down into the floor and go over to where the heating unit is, the heat exchanger is. So if we drain that out, cap it off, then in theory we should be able to get that heat exchanger out. So hmm? let's give that a go. Give it a go. Again. It's time. For next time, mate, yeah. 60 years time. 60 years. I reckon I'll be looking after it then. <laughs> right, so we're going to drain this system down. We've just been looking around and there isn't any drain points. So these are the primaries that drop into the floor and obviously you've got your it goes off there to do your hot water on your cylinder so we've opened that up we will we'll open up the return manually on the heating and then it's a good job we've got this ad magna clean here because underneath it there is a little bun so we can shut it off there and then drain it down from the bottom of the magna clean so with the pressure down on that system, let's try and get this heat exchanger out. A lot of the water, because this is the lowest point where the water's been getting out, a lot of it will have dropped through down below here and just probably dried up as it's got hot. So what we'll do, we'll uncrack it here and un undo it here, and then we can disconnect these points and see if we can get it all out. Right, let's have a look. So we'll start off by cracking the nuts off and getting rid of the old pipe work, as I said. Now, don't touch gate valves. If ever you see a gate valve on a job, just completely ignore it. I did say we was putting gate valves in here. We're actually putting lever valves in because I just don't fit gate valves anywhere. So we've got a little bit of water coming out, but that's stopping. Not much at all. There you go. There we go. And we're away, we're loose. It's whether this frame's gonna Looking new for yeah. Right, we're undone here and we're undone here. So what I'm gonna do now is lift this up and out and see what's see what's below. There we go. So underneath. There you go, you can see all the holes and whatnot in there. The water's just dripped down into the bottom there, if you've got one, on his phone. Look, technology. Trying to get the phone open. <laughs> there we go, yeah, Perfect. more light. So there you go, that's on the bottom. Look, oh yeah, it's massively. Oh, it's not load, it's not one big hole, it's loads of little ones. Yeah, it's just rusted the copper out. And then obviously it pushes the warm air through there, that way, that way, that way, and that way. And I like the way it's got that triangle in the middle to direct the air. Otherwise, it'd just hit flat on the floor, wouldn't it? Mm. I'll, yeah. I'll get that all clean. Yeah. Then. Like a new. But we've got that. So that's the main bit because that just sits. Yeah, it just sits on that. Sits on the top. I can rebuild that. Yeah. Right, let's get this out. And then what I'm going to do is just put a couple of caps on there for when we come back to uh, reassess. Yeah, it's done well. Well, even if all they've got to do is we've got the header tanks, remake them, remake them. Yeah, well, he's got, he's got header tanks on, hasn't he? But yeah, for 60 years, there's a bung valve there. 
Well, we could have drowned it there, couldn't we? Yeah, we could have done if we'd pulled it. <laughs> That's a useless place to put a bone, isn't it? At the bottom of it. But it's dead simple design, isn't it, really? Well, it seems, yeah. I'm surprised the air got through that, because they're quite tight. I know, I think they are. Well, I'm going to have a bigger one. I'm going to get one with more space here. Yeah, but yeah, if they make it exactly, so, as long as them outlet, that inlet and that outlet are exactly the same place, Yeah. All the good to go. Work. Yeah. If not, we need a plumber. A proper one. It's bloody hell, I don't know who to call that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's bloody super. So let's grab some caps out the van. We'll get those two pipes capped off. Let's pop a couple of caps on, just in case any water does find its way through and come out in this cupboard. But obviously, because that does the cylinder as well, you're going to have no hot water or heating until we get it sorted so i'm going to take it off here take this off and then let's mark that pipe before bottom big for bottom pop a cap on that a little bit of water it looks clean mm -hmm. that's a good sign mm -hmm. then again it I suppose because it doesn't go through any radi radiators yeah. or anything, it's not going to get. No, it it's going to get dirty, is it? I'm quite surprised the air well, got I think through then there. It was like it's a bit like an Austin Seven radiator, that is. Oh, is it? Did you yeah. have you had one of them as well? <laughs> it's probably got one of them in the other barn. You got when I got here. There's a car there, Mark. There's a car there. <laughs> I'm going to leave that on for him to set it in. Or? Yeah, I'll leave this. Yeah. We'll just take them fittings off. Yeah. Because then he can, he can match that up then, can't he? Yeah. Oh, there's a bit. Yes, Let's get this one off then. What about those bleed valves? Do you want me to? Yeah, well, if we keep this pipe work, then when we get it back. We'll take them apart? I'll put new ones on. Right, okay. In the shed. Oh. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. I've done it. You've done it, huh? I've done it. I bought that. I bought that. Oh, look. Well, you probably put the plumbing in the house with that. <laughs> no. Oh, is that a Nipex one? I, I bought that. It's a, I bought that at the weekend at the car festival. Six quid. For six quid. Bargain. That's a good thing, isn't it? And a, tr a beautiful tri square with a with a, a V corner on it. Yeah. For different angles. It's a tri square that dead square, but it's got a sliding V that you can put. Ah, oh, okay. Very good for welding. Yeah. I could make a radiator out of it. You, I'll, I'll probably come back and you'll have made. You go. I didn't bother going to Kenilworth now. I've done it myself. So there we go. We've got the pipe work off it. <laughs> David's going to pop it in the boot of the Porsche. And take it over to uh, to the local radiator place. So we're thinking two header, header this side, header that side, and what we're going to do is see if they can put the fins a little bit wider open, just to get a bit more airflow through it. But yeah, that's basically all it is. So once David's oh look at the sun in my eyes. So once David's got that record, we will come back over, refit it, and get it up and running again. Today is now probably three weeks after the first part of this video. David's rung me over the weekend and said, Mark, we've got the radiator done. They've done it. They fixed it. So I haven't seen it yet. I don't even think David knows I'm here yet. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's more. Good morning, David. He's in there ready. So I'm going to go in, have a look, see exactly what they've done. Apparently, he took it to a radiator recoring place. David runs a farm. The farm's just right down the bottom there. And he said before he's had loads of machinery where they've had issues with the radiators and they've sorted it out there. So apparently, he's taken it there. They've done it. They've sorted it out. So let's go in and have a look and see what they've done with this warm air heating radiator. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Tiff. How are you? I'm very well, mate. How are you? Good to see you. Is it all yeah. done? Is it all done and fixed? Apart from the plumbing. <laughs> Apart from the plumbing. So what, what two weeks once it took them? It took them about two yeah. weeks, hasn't it? Yeah. Does it look alright? Yeah. Looks spot on. It's new. 
Don't worry. Yeah. Let's, I'll follow you. Okay. Take me in. Good. Yeah. Right, let's have a look. So, David obviously dropped it off to them and uh, they didn't batter an eyelid, did they? They went, yeah, not yeah. a problem, we can do yeah. it. That's it. There you are. Look just at like, that. It's like a car radio. It does, doesn't it? It looks like a... He, he's pressure tested it to five bar. Oh, we won't be running any of that. <laughs> but you'd rather over pressurise it than... Well, yeah. That's spot on, isn't it? Yeah. We've even got the fixtures in the right place at the top. Same place. And I dare say they've measured it so it is oh, yeah, it's perfectly... Yeah. But look at that. And he said if you had the spaces any bigger... Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, the, the fins? The fins, it wouldn't be as good. Right. He said that's probably the best you'll get for heating through. For, for, for this system. Oh, yeah. have you painted all in there as well? Yeah, look at that. Look at that, yeah, look, he sealed it all up. Where it was a little bit rusty, I've put yeah. rust killer on it and then I've cemented and have, it. Have you put this in? Yes. Just to, as, I, to I assume you've offered it in and it yeah. fits well. So does it sit on top of there? It sits on top there. of that and the sides. Perfect. So yeah, it's just, it's so just abrased all that in. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a radiator man, he's yeah. used to Where it. was that, Kenilworth? Kenilworth, yeah. So, BHM, I think. so how much did that cost? Bearing in mind, 600, 600 quid. Yeah. So bearing in mind, what we had in here, you're never going to get replaced. It was put in, in well, we worked it out, yeah. 1965. So the original one from there lasted 60 years. 600 quid done, bespoke made, perfect. At least we know it's going to work a treat. All we've got to do, wow, well, it's going to work a treat if the plumbing's all right. <laughs> Do you know a plumber? Well, I, 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 know, I know one, but he's busy today, so oh, I've, t I've turned up. Dear me. Um, but yeah, we kept all the, the fittings. What I'm going to do now is offer this in place, just have a look around and see exactly what fittings we need. And I'm going to shoot off, grab what we need, come back, and then we can begin fitting this brand new radiator into this warm air heating duct, get it filled up and give it a test. Right then, we've had a look, we've got a list of bits we need, so I'm going to shoot off now to plumb base, grab some 28mm fittings, 28mm pipe, some valves to go in that little cupboard so we can isolate that um, heat, heat exchanger radiator if ever we need to. So let's shoot over there now, grab them, and we can get back and begin connecting it up. So I've been to plumb base, picked a load of fittings up, we've got a load of 28mm end feed fittings, some 28mm lever valves, 28mm compression tee that I'm going to come off that side with. David's put some um, insulation on here just to bed this radiator down on. And like I said earlier on, he's, uh, he's cleaned all everything up in there. He's a good guy. He's got it all sorted. So what we're going to do is take these nuts off. Obviously, we took the pressure out of the system before. So we can whip those nuts off and make sure we can find my grips. So what I'm going to do, the, the, the idea with it behind it is, this is the original pipe work. So that's going to sit basically there with a the lever valve on. And it comes across here into this far end one there. So we'll mount that into position there. And then I'm going to basically replicate that. I have got some air vents. So I want to get the air vents on there as well at some point. I may put the front one here and the rear one at the back. But we'll offer the radiator heat exchanger into position now. And then we can work that from there. First of all, let's just whip this off and make sure that we've got no water in the system. There we go, got nothing in there. Let's get first fitting into place here we'll put a bit of paste on here i'm reusing the nut and olive on here because i don't want to alter the pipe work of it too much the positionings of it i want to try and keep it pretty much the same and to be honest it's not a problem tightening that onto there at all it will be fine trust me so we'll hold that into place there and then what i'm going to do is put a lever valve off here and we can work from there Right, what we need to do now is put this 
into position on here and then we can work from there. Now what we've got to do is make sure there's a little gap all the way around the outside because it's got a main cowl that sits on top of this for the fan motor to sit on the top. So what I'm hoping, when we put our main line to copper into this side of the rad, put a street elbow on there, and then a little 45 like so, straight into the end of that fitting like that. And then we're gonna come off here with a thumb vent, and then the same this side along here, up and over to this main line to copper this side. So we'll pop the main line to coppers in here. I'm just gonna loose fit them at the moment. So we've got that one there, that one will go in over there. As David said, this has been pressure tested anyway, so we know it's all good. So if I pop that there, and then with a 45 bend there, that is gonna sit straight into here. And then off here, we're gonna put a thumb vent. And then the other one, straight out of our gate valve, across, up, and then into this side. I've just thought, actually, I'm going to try and get that gate valve, in, uh, that lever valve in there. So it might be quite tight. We may have to, we may have to do it this way instead of a 45 to get that lever valve in. But either way, doesn't matter because we're going to have a thumb vent there. Right, little change of plan. I'm going to put two street elbows on there and then have our lever at the front there, like so. Just because having a 45 on there is gonna throw it too close. And then also, I know someone's gonna say, because uh, the T and the vent is at the back there, it's gonna catch air in, it won't. But the way it's gonna work around there, that's coming up there, thumb vent on the top. So we'll get that done, we'll get that put set into place, get these made up and set into this radiator and then we can look at getting the front one into position. So we start off with a little bit of thread tape going on these male lines to copper compression elbows and a little bit of paste. Always put a little bit of paste on threaded stuff like this. Even though the tape's got a bit in, I always put a bit on there and then get it lined up. That's the tricky bit is lining those valves up when you come to put them in. Same with the other side, get that one lined up and then we can begin making some pipe work up. Now this is going to be for the thumb vent that I put on the back edge of this pipe work. Then we get our nut and olive on there. Again, put some paste around the outside of that olive just so it seals in there. We get it in, get it tightened up and we're ready to carry on. So that is where we're going to mount that first lever valve there. This valve goes to the left and goes down to arm so it's not going to get in the way of the case that's going to go there. So what we'll do, we'll solder these two up out of position and then we can get the valve on and connect it into there. So we get the flux inside the fitting and I always put flux on the inside of the fitting and on the pipe work. A lot of people comment saying you only have to put it inside the fitting. It's how I've always done it. It's never had an issue with me. So I'll just carry on doing it. And I've always said I've never been the neatest of solderers, but it's fairly neat and as long as it doesn't leak that's the main thing so we get it all tightened up into position with that lever valve on there and we're ready then to do the one at the front of this radiator so there we go that is the back pipe work connected up with our lever valve into the rad with our thumb vent on it that's that one done let's get this front one connected over to here so i've just put a length of pipe in there and then all we've got to do is come off this lever valve along up. What I'm going to do, and it's not going to be in the way for David at all, is come up here, elbow with a T, and then a thumb vent on this side as well. So if we get this measured up, a couple of elbows, T, and we should be near enough ready to test this. Give or take. Let's get this pipe work done. So it's coming together now. We we'll just measure a little bit of this 28 mil, get it cut into position, hand tight into that lever valve and then we can begin marking the pipe work and getting the cuts in place and the fittings on and begin to get it soldered up. 
So we get our flux onto this fitting. Now, I always use my solder reel to put the flux on. Loads of people use flux brushes. I've always used the solder because it's in my hand anyway. And I just scoop it out, put it on, job done. I just find it really easy to do it that way. So that's the back part connected. We've just got the front part done now. I've got it connected into the rad heat exchanger here. And we've come across here, T, elbow, and then up for a little thumb vent on the top. I did say to him, is that gonna be in the way there? He said, no, not a problem. So we'll get that done. And then the, the shroud that goes onto here has got cutouts where we've bought the pipe work anyway. So touch wood. Should be all right, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, should, should be. I could warm a lamb if I get a poor lamb. I'll <laughs> a lamb in there. Yeah, in, in the, the corner here. Yeah. There you go. Two, right. two for one. So let's get this soldered up. Um, once this is soldered up, I'm going to double check over everything. We was going to put two valves down where the boiler is to shut this off, but we don't need to. We've got the two valves here. Down where the boiler is, is the MagnaClean, which has got valves on it, so that's fine. And then the other pipe work coming, either the flow or the return, I'm not sure which, has got the zone valve on it, so we can isolate it there. So there's no need to. I don't know why I thought we was going to do that, but we've got on here anyway. So let's get this soldered up, and then... We're just about ready to sort of reassemble and get some water into it. So as you watch me solder these fittings up, why not just go and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, drop me a comment below. It will really help push this channel to the 40,000 subscribers that I'm aiming for by the end of the year. So that's those fittings soldered up now. I've always said, and I've never progressed to being the neatest solderer, but as long as it doesn't leak, that is the main point of getting that perfect. So we'll get that cooled off. A little wet rag there, it's been cooling down for a little bit. So we get it cooled off and then hopefully we're making some progress. With all this all in place now, we're going to go. In fact, I need to put that on first, don't I? Otherwise, we're going to get water coming out. Okay. So I've checked everywhere's tight. What we'll do now. Make sure those valves are off and then we'll turn the pressure on, get the water in up to these two points there, make sure that pipe works all good and then we can release it into this rad. So then let's manually open the heating circuit like so and pressure gauge is down, let's turn that on. Watch for the gauge to go up automatic air vent on here as well so we are letting a little bit of air out let's just drop that off a second okay, just letting a bit of air out just want to make sure it's right down that end area yeah, should be good See if water. yeah i don't think i think we all i think we do know what we're doing we good no leaks. No leaks, that's good. So we'll get this up to, do you know what? I'm gonna put it to two bar because we've got to get some air and whatnot out of it. It's been tested, what's it been tested to? Five bar. Been tested to five bar, so we'll be good at two. There we go, that'll do. Perfect, so with that up, let's pop down and see it's all good. So here we are, all good. If I so with that off and that off there, if I just, we should get, yeah, there we go, we've got water there. Perfect. Right, we know it's all good. We've got water to here, water to here. Should we open it up? Yeah. See, see, if, it's, see if we know what we are doing. Right, let's open this one then. Open that one up. There you go. Yeah, just drop top that pressure up over to about one and a half. There we go. So obviously the water will circulate a little bit around there. But we've got the cowling to go on here in a minute. I just want to now make sure. A little bit of water out there. So you can hear a little bit of air. Rattling through. It's what, at 1.5? Perfect, so we're holding pressure. So we'll leave that sat for 10 minutes while we have a coffee. And then I'll get the thermal imaging on it 
and then we'll turn the heating on and we should then be able to track the warmth through it. Before we do that, I'll put some inhibitor in the system as well. So we'll do that and then we can track the heat going through it. So we've sat down, we've had a coffee, we've let this system now stay pressurised. It's been like it half an hour or so now. So we know that this is all good. Got my thermal imaging camera, it's on charge, we're just charging it up a little bit. What I'm gonna do next is get the heating on, pump it around the system, and then what we should be able to do is see the heat coming in, working its way through the rad, and then back out. And then we know that is all good. We can then begin building the casing up, putting the fan on the top, reconnecting it in, and getting it working. Coming out of, let me just show you. The vents are scattered around the house. Funnily enough, <laughs> there's one of the vents there. Funnily enough, I did this bathroom five years ago now. Full walk-in shower, there's a big, huge bath here. Um, we, so we took all that out, mounted this in the wall. This was a hands grower eye box in there. All hands grower stuff here. And honestly, this has been in five years. It still looks as good as the day that it went in. Close couple of toilet there, basin there. Yeah, it's always nice to go back and see, to be fair, I've done lots of work here since, but to go back and see something that you've done so long ago and it's still standing the test of time. It looks perfect, but yeah, there's one of the warm air ducts. They're scattered all around the house. Obviously that's where it sucks the air in. You've got one over there, down in the corner. Sure, yeah. One here. Can tell me the water between 40. On that side as well. So yeah, all this is run off this green, this Worcester Green Star. So what we'll do, we'll get this fired up and then we can trap the heat into that new radiator that we fitted. There we go. I don't know if you can hear it, but we've got water moving round inside here. We will keep pulling the air out of here, but let's see if we've got any heat. It shouldn't take too long to come and work its way up to here. But yeah, you can definitely hear the water rattling around there. A few moments later. Right, we've got heat coming through this rad now. Let me show you with the thermal imaging if we can. I don't know if it's gonna to focus too good on here. What I'll do, I'll switch now to my phone because I know we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Right then, I'm filming this on my phone now just because I can zoom in better onto this thermal imaging camera. Right, as you can see, the heat is coming through there. The little white crosshair in the middle, if you look at the, in the top left box, the center, which is at the top, is 35 degrees. That's the white crosshair. If you look down in the bottom right corner, there's a red, I don't know if you can see it there, a little red crosshair dotting about. That is the max temperature. So the max is 40 degrees, but you can see the heat coming straight through them, them veins now. I mean, look at that, we're getting 40 degrees. The tanks at the side, they're running at 30, 33 degrees. Now it might be the heat's not coming through that aluminium or whatever it is they've used on there. Not sure what they've used to be honest. But the pipe work, as you can see, if I put that white crosshair in the middle. So at the minute, the core, as you can see, I can make this camera focus 42 degrees, max 45. So we're getting heat through there. Yeah, I can feel it. So what we need to do now, now we know the heat is coming through there, is get the shroud on and get a fan to start blowing some air through there. Because what we don't want is that getting too hot without the fan running. But at the minute, it is running really well. It's getting nice and warm. So then with that, we know all works and everything is fine. This is the casing that sits on the top. As you can see, got the cutouts there and there. David tells me it sits internally, doesn't it? Yeah. Sits internally into here. He said it's a little bit of a, a pain to get on. So we're going to offer it in as best we can and hopefully it will go into position. You've done it all, you've, I can't believe you've even painted the motor. <laughs> uh, right, let's have a look. Okay. Is it going to miss that ball? Yeah, no. Your lighting rig. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, might need a little bit out. Right. A little bit out of there. Okay. Let me mark that. Do you want to so maybe I can soon that out. yeah we're just gonna have to trim right, okay what about this side let me have a look if we trim that out of there because i'll stuff that with insulation anyway. and then if we just come off there with that a little bit of tweaking yeah okay. that's all part of the fun no problem okay oh, let's go take two okay In. Is it in the... In everywhere. Hey, look at that. Perfect. So, there we go. That's in. We just tweaked the little bits out there. It's not an issue at all. And then there's a side panel to go on here. David's got it here. So put this side panel on there and then the fan sits there and directs everything down through our radiator. So this is the actual fan blower that goes in. As you can see, that square at the bottom, run by that there, and it's just a little motor that sits on the side, but we're gonna bolt that into position here. It's just four screws that hold it on, and then the motor on the side. Right then, we've now got the fan connected in, the motor for the fan, which is here, is just belt driven. See this belt here, runs around, spins this fan, which then pushes air down through the radiator that's there and off out into the warm air ducting. So what we've got to do now is get the heating on, which we've just been and turned the boiler on. So we've got heat coming through this rad. So if we turn the stat up on the wall in there now, this will kick into life. So let me pop that there. Right, with the heating on now, it's circulating round through that rad. We'll turn the stat up and it will fire this up to work. There we go. It might, might be coming through really loud on this video because my microphone is really good. Once the lid's on, the side's on, we've got the side panel here to go on. Once that's on, the lid's on, these doors are shut, you can barely hear it. But as you can see, motor's running. So that's controlled by the stat up in the wall in the lounge. Runs this and blows the warm air. So let's turn the thermal imaging camera on. I don't know if this will work, but let's see if it will pick up any heat coming through the ducting. Let's find this, let's go to this duct here. Let's open that up. I can feel the air coming through. Oh, there you go. Can see it, you can see the heat coming through. And as that comes through, it will begin warming the room. Where else have we got? Here it is, here. So, see how warm that is there. It's, oh, that's lovely and warm. You can feel the heat coming through. Yeah, I'm just in here. Feel the heat coming through there, and the same with that one. You can see the heat coming through. Look at that look. Ooh. Right there you go. Hey, well done. Well done. Absolutely super. You need to take a picture of the happy customer. <laughs> oh, he's over the moon. Ooh. Look at him. He's over the moon. We've had an audience as well. The, na <laughs> the neighbours have popped round to see what's going on. But yeah, we've got heat coming through here now. We'll give that 20 minutes or so. Let that build up. Again, through this one here. Let that build up and uh, we'll see how it is quickly. 
Let's do the tissue test just to show you. There you go, look at that. So that is the warm air. There is loads coming out of there. But yeah, it's coming out of there. It's coming out of there, lovely. Right, there we go. Done. There's a slight little. You might be able to pick it up. David thinks inside there might be something touching the fan. Was it or yeah, something? Just touching the fan. It's so David's going to have a little tweak around with that. He likes to have a little play around, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll get it running smooth. But everywhere, as I've showed you, everywhere is getting nice and warm the thermal imaging camera is showing the heat coming through and you're saying it's a lot better than it was before oh, yes yeah. more, more perfect yeah. perfect good excellent there we go happy customer Thank i've you done too. a job that i when david first run me with it i said i'll come and have a look i don't know if i can fix it i've never done it before but we've had a go we've done it someone's the the, the radiator guys fixed the radiator in principle it's a really simple straightforward forward thing it's, it's really mechanical the fan pushes the air down through there and the hot water the heating loop works there so yeah it's been something a little bit different hope you've enjoyed it if you have hit the like button hit the subscribe button drop me a comment let me know what you think to this system and i'll catch you on the next one